the Denver mare race coming up in less than four weeks, just under four weeks. Things, campaigns ramping up into high gear. Although there's a bit of a quiet before the storm still. Some candidates holding back on their television advertisements, it would seem. Especially the top fundraisers haven't really gone all out on the airwaves yet. Ballots go out three weeks before election day, so I suspect that will change in the coming days to a week. Once ballots are out, I think the candidates will hammer the advertisements basically as much as possible. And it's a very interesting race. 17 candidates. I think that there's probably about seven that actually could win. And if no one gets to 50% in this round, which is basically an absolute guarantee that they will not, given how many candidates there are splitting the vote, um, basically no way any candidate can get to 50 by themselves. Um, then it will go to a runoff between the top two, which will occur two months later. So it will go to a runoff between the top two. So that's basically what we're vying for in this first election date in three and a half weeks. And there's about seven that have a chance to make that runoff based on name recognition, fundraising, typical things that go into why people vote for people. Um, you gotta be known, you gotta be liked, and that's basically it. And uh, if people don't know you, they can't like you. So first step is you need to be known. You can be known through your own endeavors or you can pay for advertising to introduce yourself to people, make yourself known. And there's about seven who can realistically do that. Um, some which are not fundraising as much, like Lisa Calderon, but she ran for mayor four years ago, finished third with 19% of the vote. So Denverites know her from that to some extent. Um, so she doesn't need as much money to get her uh, name out there. And she's a very progressive candidate, which tends to lend itself to more grassroots supporters, younger supporters, uh, in which case you might not need as much money because you have that like on the ground people power. You can go knock doors and things like that. She's tied in with a lot of activist groups, etc. She can get her message out that way. Um, but I wouldn't say she's a front runner. Um, another candidate not fundraising too much in a similar situation is Debbie Ortega, who has been on city council in Denver for many, many years. Um, two different stints of like a decade plus each stint. So she is another person who Denverites know to some extent because she's been on the ballot before in the city council races. Uh, lots of people have bubbled in her name before on their ballot. And she also has a lot of connections uh, to different groups, unions, etc. in Denver that she's accumulated over the years in her time working in city council, working on city issues with, with groups in Denver. So she might also not need as much money to get the word out there and appeal to people. Um, then another candidate that has raised more, but not a ton, he's kind of in a middle level, is State Senator Chris Hansen. And he is not very well known. He does represent a Denver district, which is just one part of Denver. Um, so some people might know him from their ballot already, um, but not super well known. And he's just raised a medium amount. So it might be tough for him to really elevate his campaign uh, to the level it needs to be. And because of that, 
he took the strategy of starting advertising early. He was the first candidate to go up with a TV commercial and he went pretty hard. Like he, uh, he spent a lot of his money to be on the air a lot and get his name out there um, before anyone else was, which was uh, smart in the sense that he could stand out and be the only one on TV before, you know, several candidates are all advertising at the same time. Um, so that has helped him gain recognition for sure. Um, the latest fundraising reports just came out though, and he didn't see a significant boost in that. So I think maybe one hope for him was with going out with all this advertising early, he could get name recognition, and even if he had to spend a lot of his money, sometimes you spend money to make money, by getting his name out there, he could fundraise more. Um, but that being said, he did not fundraise a huge amount um, this latest time, so that doesn't seem to have paid off financially, and he was not gonna have as much money to keep his name out there on TV, etc., down the home stretch. So he's kind of fighting an uphill battle. Um, another candidate that's totally an X-factor is registered Republican, the only re registered Republican in the race, Andy uh, Rugo. And you wouldn't think a Republican would have much of a chance in Denver, but when there's 17 candidates running and every, all the Democrats are splitting the vote amongst themselves, you're only going to need about 20% to make the runoff because there's just too many candidates taking slivers of the vote that no one candidate is going to have a large amount. So uh, crunching the numbers, you'd think maybe around 20% will do it. And usually in partisan races, the Republican in Denver gets about 18%. So 16 to 18%. So if he can get all the Republican base to vote for him, he's going to be right up there. And he has not fundraised much at all, but he's very personally wealthy and has been self-funding his campaign. So assuming he's loaned a lot of money to his campaign, assuming that he's willing to spend all that money, he'll be able to spend with almost the best of the best amongst the candidates. So. Uh, he'll be able, he came in, he's just an outsider, hasn't been in politics, people don't know him, but he'll have enough money to get his name out there um, to an extent. He's sent out the most uh, mailers so far, and like I said, he's the only Republican. He's not leaning into being a Republican that hard. He, his campaign uh, literature isn't read or anything. So, and this Denver mayor is a nonpartisan race, so they don't actually show up on the ballot with a D or an R next to their name, which could both hurt and help him. Um, if he just wanted to lock down the Republican base, it would help to have the R. So not having that, some Republicans might not even know he's a Republican and not vote for him, but he might gain a few Democrats independents that don't really know he's a Republican either, and they think, well, he's just another guy, and he's kind of tough on crime, and we'll give him a shot, but uh, I think he definitely has a chance to make the runoff, um, just based on being in his kind of his own lane of being a Republican in such a divided field. And that leaves us with the final three, who are the top fundraisers, and possibly, you could say, the front runners. Although any of the top seven really um, wouldn't be too surprised, you know, if they found a way to do it. Um, but first you have Leslie Harrod, who's a state house uh, representative. And she is uh, a little bit more progressive, but not, not super far left. Um, she is a very good speaker. Um, she's very eloquent, articulate, um, she has a lot of gusto and very impressive when you see her. Um, 
she's faced some criticisms for being hard on her staff. <laughs> there were some articles that came out about not having the best work environment, and um, uh, that's something that people have kind of generally known about her. Um, but she is the only um, African American candidate who's also a woman and also gay, um, outwardly gay. And so she can really run on the idea of change and representation. And Denver's never had a female mayor. So people who are looking to break that trend, you know, they have a, a potentially good candidate in her. Um, then next you have Mike Johnston who was a former state senator uh, in Denver. Um, people know him a little bit from that, but more so from his runs for governor and for Senate. Um, got his name out there. He is second overall um, in fundraising right now, especially if you add in the uh, outside money that's supporting him. Um, super PACs, so to speak, or just PACs. Um, he brings a lot to the table, and also, like Leslie Harrod, very eloquent, very good speaker, uh, very charismatic. Um, he has a bit of the opposite uh, characteristics of Leslie Harrod in being a straight white man, and so how does that play into the race this year? He's also uh, similar to Leslie Harrod, though, in that he's progressive, but not totally uh, left, kind of straddles the line uh, in some respects. And then lastly, you have Kelly Broff, who uh, was chief of staff to Mayor Hickenlooper when he was mayor of Denver, and has most recently been the CEO of the Denver Chamber of Commerce or the head of the, the Denver Chamber of Commerce. Um, so she has a lot of business support. Um, obviously, uh, that's a big reason why she's the top fundraiser in the race so far. And it's by a fairly significant amount, actually. So she's going to have noticeably the most money to get her name out there, which nobody really knew her outside of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, realms and city politics realms, but she wasn't she wasn't really known to your to your average Denverite. Um, but she will definitely have the money to do it, and she can run on uh, a little bit more of a moderate message, um, being tied in with the business community uh, and her experience uh, working with Mayor Hickenlooper. So it will be very interesting. Uh, a few endorsements, uh, Mayor Wellington Webb endorsed Leslie Harrod, um, former Governor Bill Ritter endorsed Chris Hansen, um, but largely this race is going to come down to the final frantic weeks and who will squeak into the final two because it just without a doubt is going to be very close the way that we're talking about dividing up the percentages amongst so many candidates. Um, no, it, it's going to be within, you know, 5% for sure, the battle between second and third place, uh, almost certainly, uh, and could easily be less than 1%, you know, 1, 2, 3%, so, which isn't a ton of votes when you're just looking at the city of Denver, so it's really going to come down to the finish and will be really fascinating to see who can pull away through their um, campaign operation, TV ads, mailers, door knocking, um, how well they do in the debates, community events, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then ultimately, who Denver Denverites will want to will want to go with, and who they'll be um, most compelled by, and who matches where they're at and what they're feeling and what they're wanting for their city. So super fasc fascinating race and can't wait to see what happens in the weeks to come.